and go live. All right, guys, we are live. Uh, just so everybody knows, Carmen, uh, welcome. Jazzy, welcome. Thank you, my man. As always, we'll give uh, people a little bit of time to get their coffees, their teas, their mimosas. I, we've yet to do a mimosa on brunch. And it's probably my fault because I haven't, I haven't been able to get to, uh, to the liquor store and pick up a bottle of champagne. So I, I, I'm going to make sure I try to do that for next week. Um, as always, guys, let us know what you're having for brunch. Are you a big brunch eater? Are you, you know, are you someone like myself who skips breakfast? But I did bring a, fruit, a plate of fruit here today just to kind of munch on while we speak. Ah, you got some eggs going. I'm seeing the messages come in. Big, big shout out to everyone who's joining us. We're going to be starting. Um, yes, jazz is so healthy. I try, John. Uh, you know, I try. I try my best here. I'm trying to keep the, the six pack going or the two, four. I don't know what, which one it is yet. So trying to figure that one out. We're going to be starting at 1035, the formal presentation, so to speak. Okay, uh, Jazzy, can you hear me? Yep. Right on. Carmen, are, are you good for audio and mic? I believe so. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I just want to let you know that we also have uh, uh, the YouTube live is now up and streaming. I just have to make some adjustments uh, for, for audio so there's no interference. You do, you do that. I'll, I'll try to keep people entertained with, entertained with my song and dance. No, not really. There's no dancing. Good, good, good morning, no dancing Good singing. morning, Brampton. <laughs> Let us know. I mean, Simos started this on our first brunch, and I, I think it worked really well in terms of let us know where you're coming in from. Montreal. I see Kitchener. Let us know where everyone's signing in from today. It's our third edition of REC Brunch Halifax. Hope everything is safe. Noville, Brampton, and let's friends. go. Paris, Ontario, Oakville, Mississauga. We're loving it. Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. We're going to wait another couple of minutes to, as I mentioned, to get officially started with brunch. But keep on letting us know. Vancouver, Lin thank Linda you. Linda Miller from Vancouver, 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. Wow. Calgary. What time is it in Calgary? We're two hours behind in Calgary, hours, I guess. Two hours, yeah. two hours nice. Etobicoke, hey, Stephen Clark. Shout out to Stephen. Florida, I so, just saw. Wow, love it. Bl Stephanie blueberry pancakes. Stephen Clark's doing some blueberry pancakes right now. That's good. Look, Stephen, maybe I'm we jealous. can practice some social distancing. You can drop it off in the front of my house. I can, I'll, I'll wait till you get back into your car. I'll pick it up. For, like, I, we'll, we'll figure it out. I love, I love blueberry pancakes. I got my fruit ready. Rockland, near, on, uh, near Ottawa. Well, thanks for letting me know it's near Ottawa because I had no clue where Rockland was. We're going to get right. started in a couple of minutes, guys. Make sure you get your coffees, your teas, your orange juices, whatever, your food, your fruit, whatever it is. We're going to be starting in a couple of minutes. Ah, we got a chef. Well, Carmen, you might as well tell us right now. We have people asking, what are you having? My tea, a cup of all tea. All right. Well, that, that doesn't really make a brunch. Nice no, one. you know what? I'm not uh, eating. I'm, I'm intermittent fasting right now. All right, all right. I, I've been doing this for about two, uh, coming up to about a year and a half for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I usually break, break the fast at around 12 o'clock. Is that kind of what you're doing? Yeah, as soon as uh, 12, 12.30. And, yeah. um, and you know what? It, it's great. I don't, I don't mind it at all. And I found myself being so, like, a lot sharper in that yeah. eight o'clock to about 12 o'clock time. I, I laugh and say, sometimes I get done in that first four hours. What, what I get done in a week sometimes, like, you know, I'm so sharp and ready to rock. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. So I, I'm not hungry. I actually feel better if I don't have something first thing. And yeah. I can eat until one. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like I get sluggish. Like on a Sunday, I'll, I'll have breakfast, like a little heavier Lydia, breakfast. Lydia Gordon doing the 816. Lydia, t t go, tell us what that is. L let me just, as we wait two more minutes, um, Lydia, are, if, are you able to put up your hand? 
Lydia? I got Franca on here. Shout out to Franca. We got omelets being made. I, I Man, I'm getting real hungry. Carmen, you and I are going to have a problem here in a little while. Like, see, yeah. noticing what people are eating for breakfast. I'm actually getting really espresso for Tyler. Tyler probably has a couple of espressos. I, I in just the unmuted morning. L L L Lydia Gordon. Are you there? Hi, Lydia. Oh, what, what's the 816 diet? Blame that on my husband. I don't know. I'm not the techie guy here. <laughs> oh, we hear no, you. We can hear you perfectly. We hear you perfectly fine. Okay. Sorry. No, I don't know what's going on there. I'm typing away. I was typing and that no was worries. not what I typed. <laughs> oh, you typed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why aren't you talking? Okay. Lydia, tell us about this 816. I don't that do that. the hours in the yes, day? And I, I'm not that eater. Let me put him on. Hang on. Right on. For everyone else, we're going to be getting started in a minute. We just wanted to bring in Lydia and her husband. Don't know your name yet. Introduce yourself, my man. My name's uh, Gus Gordon. And my wife's name's Lydia Gordon. I just heard you guys talk about uh, not eating till uh, noon. And uh, yeah. it's commonly known as the 816 diet. Got it's it. 24 hours. Uh, eight hours uh, you're... You're eating between 12 and 8, 8 p.m. And then the other 16 hours, you're, you're fasting, basically. Love it. Got it. Mm -hmm. well, Got it. Appreciate well, thanks, thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on live at, on the REC brunch. No well, problem. I guess we, we should get started. Mm. Welcome to everyone here live uh, uh, to the REC brunch. It's our third edition, myself and Simos. We do have a couple of guests that are going to be coming on with us today. Um, and, and in a couple of minutes, we'll introduce our guests. Uh, but I also wanted to welcome everyone across the world right now who's watching live on YouTube. Thank you so much for taking the time this morning to watch us live. We really, really appreciate it. Big, big shout out to our team. Um, you know, it, it, they allow myself and Simos just to come in, click a button here and there, and then we get to go no live. So big shout out, please, guys, inside the, uh, uh, the chat, give a big shout out to the team, Tyler, Ty Ty Walburn, a.k.a. our air traffic controller, who makes this all happen. Big shout out to Bobby Pume, director of operations, who uh, made sure that everything's set up. He's actually going to be controlling some poll questions as well as we go on. Um, uh, big shout out to our director of sales and marketing, Laura Stewart, Elto Stewart, um, and to the rest of our media squad. Uh, they're the guys and gals that allow us to, again, do this live, do all the technical stuff in the background and make sure the recordings come out and everything you see on YouTube right now is, is a collection of everyone on our media squad putting things together for us. So thank you to the REC squad, to everyone at REC Canada, all of our realtors, our 25 realtors as well, that uh, uh, there's some guests on this as uh, uh, some attendees and participants that were invited from our team. So shout out to you if myself and Simo have not met you yet. We look forward to meeting uh, with you soon. So for, uh, again, to everybody on YouTube, if you're not uh, yet been introduced to us, please in the comments of YouTube, just leave us your email address um, and, and someone from my team a little bit later on today uh, will make sure that we tell you how to connect with us. So in the comments right below in the, in the, on YouTube Live, if you're watching on YouTube Live, just leave us your name uh, and your email and, and, and we wanna make sure that we get connected with you and we'll talk, tell you about how you can get this recording and our past recordings. For, for the rest of the REC Nation watching on, uh, uh, in the webinar right now, we will be sending out an email uh, at around three o'clock today, three to four o'clock today, just making sure our audio is good. Uh, I'm going to be sending out an email from about three to four o'clock today with all the information that we covered today. So don't worry. Don't cramp your hands trying to take notes. We're going to have the recording sent to you. We'll make the introductions to our guests as well. And so without further ado, I would like to welcome Carmen Campanero from Pro, Pro Funds. How are you doing today, Carmen? I'm awesome. How are you? We're fantastic. Simos, my man, how's your week been, buddy? I mean, you and I have been obviously practicing social distancing. We've been together in, a, uh, in business for coming up to 15 years now. It's the first time, it's the first time we haven't seen each other for whatever it's been. It's like six months. I'm oh, sorry, six weeks now. Yeah, I have not seen you in the physical form. 
How has your past week been? What have you been up to? Well, it, it is. So, so I am getting a little bit frustrated with social distancing. Uh, I, I'm still taking it extremely serious until they lift this thing. And I, I think because uh, the entire province really listened, um, I do think there is a lot of rumbling right now happening and a lot of uh, stuff in the back end where people are starting to put their plans of getting Ontario back to work. Uh, Saskatchewan's reopening next week. Um, and obviously Ontario will be really looking closely at what Saskatchewan um, and the Atlantic provinces are doing to get back. Obviously they have a lot less population, a lot bigger area. So it's easier for craziness. It's easier for craziness not to happen there. Where here, if they make the mistake and open too early and we get a flare up, we just kind of undo everything that social distancing did accomplish. Um, I personally getting a little frustrated with it. Like I'm itching to get back to my norm. Um, I don't know what that norm will be, but um, I, I'm a person who needs social interaction uh, above and beyond. I'm not talking about just business. Like I need to see people. I need to be social. Uh, I need to be able to go for a drive. Uh, it's just how I've been operating my whole life. So I'm starting to, to feel a little bit of that wrath. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm definitely staying uh, positive by spending some time in my backyard. Nice. Um, and, and well, you got a huge, you, you got a beautiful, for anybody that doesn't know uh, uh, what Simos has built in his backyard, my man has an oasis. It's like a resort. Like I, I, every time I go there, I feel like I should be buying a ticket to, to stay there for a week. Uh, you know, has the, has the pool set up. What is that barbecue? Like happy, happy Easter, happy bladed Easter uh, to you, my man. Um, what, like, what is that whole contraption that you have in the backyard to cook with? Yeah. So I imported that beauty from the motherland. Yes. Uh, and, and basically it has capacity to put two whole animals on it. Um, when, when I ordered it last year, it was meant to, to I was meant to host Easter. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't come in on time. <clears throat> it was held up during between customs or some pieces or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I got it up and running for uh, June of last year. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't the same. I, I like I'm not going to put a whole animal on. Uh, just for for two three people i thought so i just did some barbecues charcoal whatever and i'll show a picture of it maybe next weekend yeah, but uh, yeah. this in this year of course um first and foremost uh like my, my mom had passed last year so so rest in peace so you're not like really and truly you're not celebrating during that year of of, of mourning i just thought it was i was going to do the opposite and throw the biggest bash in canada and then social distancing happened so i couldn't even throw the biggest bash in canada but I had made a promise to myself to put a lamb on that, uh, on that grill. And, uh, that's exactly what I did. So I had, uh, my, my sister and uh, brother-in-law, uh, come in social distance with us. The backyard is quite large. So I, I, I mean, I, they sat on one side, we sat on the other side and, uh, and we, we, we put a whole lamb on it. Uh, we I ate some, we, we ate some lamb. We had some laughs and, uh, that was Easter there on Sunday of, uh, last week. Love so I, I, again, like all, all, all do, it, it's getting frustrating, but I'm still okay. Yeah. Like, like we're, we're, we're making do and we're making the best out of it. I'd love I, to hear I, how our, our friend Carmen is spending the last few weeks. Actually, I've been working. Uh, all right. I guess we're considered an essential service is real estate. Yeah. It must be right. So we're, our, our office is open. Uh, I've been coming into work pretty much every day. So it hasn't felt that different for me. We're really busy, uh, business as usual, outside of the fact that the majority of our team, they're all working from home. And we're just getting a note really quickly, Carmen, is, is are you able to just put your volume up? People want to hear that beautiful voice. There we um, go. Is that better? Is, uh, let us know, guys and gals, if that's better. Sorry about that, Carmen. Go ahead, continue. No worries, no worries. So, yeah, we're, we're actually here, uh, my partner and I, Richard and um a couple other members of the team have been working so we're here uh love out there like it feels weird um i can't wait for everything to get back to where we are and and continue with purchasing real estate and making money right well well, well, look, thanks to everybody who's signing on right now. There's, there, there's hundreds of people on the live uh, with us right here in the webinar. There's hundreds of people watching on YouTube. And then there's going to be thousands who, who watch this recording, Carmen. And mo you know, there's going to be a lot of people that don't know what ProFunds does. Give us that, like, let us know, let the people here and the people that, and the guys and gals that are going to watch the recording, what does ProFunds do? 
Yeah. And, and you know what? It's interesting because a lot of our existing clients don't even understand what we actually do. They, okay. <laughs> so, so, and why am I saying that? Because we have a few different divisions and we've been in the business for 25 years. So ProFunds Mortgages is a mortgage brokerage. Okay. And since the day ProFunds came to life, we've been catering to real estate investors and their needs for financing. And so we do anything that you need in financing with respect to uh, land, apartment buildings, uh, commercial, industrial, multi-residential, condos, pre-construction, all that stuff. So over the years, we've done that. And then we largely into private lending. So we provide the entity for borrowing and we provide uh, an entity that you can lend. So you can lend your money make great returns in private lending, have us source and go through the due diligence. And, um, and that's basically what we do. I mean, we have all the other divisions. We have a REIT district property trust, and we have our company called Valor Group, which is a development company. So it's a, it's a good combo. That's awesome. Now from the, I want to kind of break it up and uh, uh, into in, in terms of from the financing, like the brokerage perspective, and then we'll speak about how, the investment aspect of it works as well. In terms of in terms of the finance, like what are you seeing right now in the world of mortgages? Mm, it's interesting. Um, well, first of all, we're busy. There's a lot of applications coming in. Um, what happened when the coronavirus uh, pandemic was noted? Every, all the banks reduced their interest rates tremendously, and, and it was crazy. We had this influx of people looking to refinance now all the institutions are overwhelmed. So things are a lot slower. Um, we are open. We're doing mortgages daily. We're doing commercial and residential institutionally. So, uh, but it's just taking a little bit longer. And now after the first four weeks have gone by, banks are starting to tighten up a bit with their lending criteria. They wanna see that you have income, right? So confirmation of income needs to be brought to them up front because so many people have been laid off and they want to make sure that you have the ability to pay and not get this mortgage and then request a deferred mortgage uh, payment, right? So they're very uh, detailed about that. But if you have strong credit and income, you're, you're able to process things very quickly. On the commercial side, many of the institutions are kind of, uh, they're, they're up and running and they're working. We're getting commercial mortgages done. They're taking a lot longer, obviously. Of course. Um, but... Um, some of them are so overwhelmed with uh, facilitating the government programs that have been implemented um, of, of these deferred mortgage payments or any grants and bonuses and things like that that they're offering. They're going through a lot of the institutions. So a lot of the commercial departments have been very bombarded. So they're a lot slower. So when people are purchasing, they're going to need to have a bit more time with their financing conditions and sellers have to be a little bit more open-minded in that regard. We, we say it all, all the time, not only to our investors, but even first-time home buyers, or if you're thinking about smart sizing, meaning uh, uh, moving into a bigger home or a, a smaller home, call this a personal opinion, um, call this the opinion, uh, opinion of REC, but what, working with an independent mortgage broker is really the way to go because you know if you go to the red bank they don't tell you about the blue bank and the blue bank doesn't tell you about the green bank they're not going to tell you about the best rates and the best terms around the corner or someone they don't like about their best terms their best terms well yeah right obviously they're only going to speak about what they have to offer but we're some we're someone like carmen and her team um and maybe you can speak about how many lenders like yeah. institutions you work with and then we'll talk about the private lending side but the amount of uh, uh, lenders that you have access to right across the country. It must be in the like four or 500 range or something. Like, how, how many do you work with Carmen? We have, we have a huge amount of lenders that we have access to. So we work for the purse for the borrower. So um, you're buying a house. I'm working for you and I'm going to make sure I find the best possible opportunity for you out there with a rate or something that works yep. with your current situation. So there's thousands of lenders that are, that we have access to on our system that people don't even know exist and they're great rates they're they're not like just because you're not the big five bank doesn't mean you're not going to get a good rate or good terms or maybe they'll even go a higher loan to value um and, and benefit people so also one other thing 
is uh, if you work with a broker, um, you have one credit hit because I send that credit bureau to 20 institutions, right? And shopping's not good, so we have to be careful. So that's right. Uh, that's and, big. Yeah, really big. So shopping's one of the worst things you can do if you're in the industry because pulling your credit and having different hits with different institutions on your credit bureau looks like you're shopping and it's not favorable. Look, I mean, we're in the real estate business. We're not in the, we're not a mortgage company. And like, we don't even know all the lenders, right? And that's why it's so important, guys and gals, uh, uh, whoever's watching and listening right now, it's so important to go to an independent mortgage broker because of all the, the reasons that Carmen said. And then you, on top of everything else, you get to use her experience, her connections, all 25 years of connections. I mean, I've been in this business, Seamus and I've been in this business for 15 years, but you, you know, you top us in it. Um, and, 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 and you feel old, okay? No, but look, you don't look it, you don't look it, but I want to, the 25 years of wealth of knowledge that you bring to the table is just, it, it, it's really, really incredible. And I hope everyone here watching and listening um, gets an opportunity to work with your team. I mean, uh, we do a lot of business with each other um, and and, and just give your, give the mortgage broker at one of Carmen's team a, a, a shot and, and go through kind of the process. It's also really important for people to understand that what you think is okay to send to an institution um, and in and, and order to get your approval, we package deals a certain way. And I'm not saying we, we're doing anything unethically. We just have to make sure that it's in this, it's, it's a sales package. And you have to understand what are they looking for? And in that case, you have a better opportunity to get the approvals. And I'm going to go back to the shopping thing because a lot of people, they'll go to different mortgage brokers and they're going to shop for, oh, I want a quarter to point difference. Well, you should really think about a, a really important factor is loyalty because if I get to know you and, I, and I've already sent your deal out over the last five years we've been working together and I know exactly what lender we've been to, you know, what properties you have, we can strategize. So for those that are looking to qualify for, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20, 20 residential mortgages, you have to work with someone that understands what you have there and have loyalty and working with that person to get far further ahead than shopping for a quarter of a point. So there's so many things to talk about there. Just curious, what's your thoughts? And, and, and you know, Simos is the only one that I know that does really have a crystal ball. Um, in his home, so he's the only. I, I, one. Do. I do. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that he lent lent it to you, Carmen. Um, what's your thoughts of what's going to happen with rates in the next six? You know, short term, medium term, six months, maybe out to call it a year. My gut, my intuition, yeah. my crystal ball is that they're going to stay low. Um, I think they're going to continue to stay low. A lot of focus on keeping the rates low and motivating people to continue to buy real estate uh, to keep our market somewhat stable. Hello? I'm, I'm ready. Oh, he got his crystal ball ready for you. Ah, that's all. I love it. Okay. Hello, where are you? <laughs> no, he just needed to bring that crystal ball. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a permanent prop for me. Oh, yes, so, it, uh, as it should be. So, so I, I was talking to the crystal ball last night. Uh, it is by the Smithsonian. <laughs> so I was, I was speaking to the, I was speaking to the crystal ball last night. My prediction is by June we're going to be, I believe, um, even malls uh, might be open. Um, I do think that by mid-May they're going to roll all uh, essential services back to the office, meaning uh, put on your mask, put on your gloves, uh, uh, make sure you're practicing. Uh, the best that you can in social distancing while you're out and about. But I do think they're going to roll back the offices in the next uh, two to three weeks uh, where there's going to be the government goes back where uh, the, the private sector, uh, all ascent. So, so the first, so the first ones that were, that were sent home are going to be the last ones coming back. Yeah. So your malls, your retail, like where, where, where people are caught, like cinemas, uh, golf courses. I think those are going to be the last ones to open. Um, but I do think uh, the first ones to go back are going to be obviously all the sectors of government, the medical sectors, your optometrists, your all the all the ones that were kind of put on emergency only are all going to go back. Um, and and uh, by I think mid May, 
uh, we're going to see kind of uh, a returning workforce by end of May. I think we're by end of May, end of May, mid June. I think you're going to have your, uh, if in fact the, the 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 we've seen the peak and they can really go to that. I think we're really going to see a return of the workforce, um, and I think over the next six months, then you're going to have uh, your your employment sector starting to normalize and getting back to those uh, le levels. Um, I was on a webinar yesterday, guys, uh, where the RBC uh, chief economist was on. It was put on by International Home Marketing Group. Shout out to Elliot Tobe. Uh, if he's on here, uh, he put on a tremendous webinar. Uh, and the RB RBC's chief economist said uh, they typically uh, do a quarterly update where they're talking about 30,000 jobs gained or lost, and that's going to make and break a quarter and go into the song and dance. Uh, there was a million jobs lost last month, uh, and if, but of course uh, they weren't lost because of economical reasons. They were they were lost because of a specific uh, event. So it's a it's a event driven, and as soon as the event is uh, kind of behind us, we're going to see some kind of a return. Uh, but no, look, end, I'm sorry, I was going to say, Seamus, to your point about unemployment. I mean. Unemployment, I think the last number that I've seen was 15%. Somebody can maybe uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, which is obviously a very, very large number. But that also tells us a story that 85% of people are still employed, right? And so are you seeing that as well, Carmen? Like the, the, the calls that you're receiving, are you seeing that, that, that most people, when they're putting in an application, they're working? Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to just revert back for a second. We had an economist... Uh, interviewed as well for our company to put some uh, peace in our investors' minds. And uh, he was saying the same thing, that basically, um, you know, what, what Simeon was saying is that in, in by June, things um, are going to come back around and it's not going to be doomsday, guys. So it's not that and, and just be at peace. But most of the people I'm speaking to, I mean, there's, I, there's two extremes. I have people coming to me saying, oh my gosh, this is absolute devastation, doomsday. And then I have people coming to me and saying, oh, I'm moving on with my investments. I need to get a mortgage. I need to do this. And for the most part, people are, are employed. Um, I think it's just most, most of the service industry that are suffering right now. Of course. Right. So, but ultimately they're going to go back and hopefully a lot of them can persevere through this time. And hopefully the government will uh, put something in place to help them financially so that they can get back up and running. And then we can go back to business. Um, 100%. Uh, I just want, I just have one last question because I want to, I want Carmen to really dive into some of the private financing, ways to make money, uh, et cetera. Yesterday, uh, it was announced uh, some further help. Uh, and this goes out to all our small business and self employed uh, family out there, uh, to the REC family. And I know. Carmen has quite a few of her people into this webinar. So if you're if you're in business for self, you're self-employed. Um, yesterday, uh, the Ontario government, working with the federal government, put out a new incentive that you may or may not have heard of, and it is addressing your rent. So if you own a restaurant, a small business, if you own uh, a space that you're leasing, if you're operating your business out of a lease space, they have finally brought an update to that world. People were getting drilled and killed. Um, and uh, I'll share my story if we have time at the end, uh, because I'm personally, uh, with, along with one of my partners, uh, are, are building a restaurant in Yorkville right now. And, we're, and our rent is 10, 15 grand a month. Um, and uh, unless something goes into place, like we haven't even been able to start a restaurant, we're just building. And if you gotta pay 15 grand a month and you can't even do construction, you're gonna get killed quickly. So the, the government has now just brought some incentives into place. Um, if you're, if, as long as your landlord agrees to work with you and they provide 25% relief, the government will provide 50% relief and you as a tenant will provide the, the remaining 25. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for more information regarding these programs or want to discuss your situation, because you feel us as commercial brokers as well, can assist you in negotiating some of these terms with your landlords please reach out after it takes us a minute to go over your situation and give you some advice. Um, so I don't want to go down this whole path because it's big, but please reach out to us after uh, info at recanada.com with any of your questions. Um, Carmen, I want to really, I want you to really dive into a couple things. Um, uh, a lot, one of the, one of the polls 
Uh, our polls are open, by the way, uh, uh, right now. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, uh, there's a bunch of really funny questions that are nonsense, but we just like to have fun with. But there's some serious questions in there. Uh, one of them is, are you shaking in your boots in defense, um, worried about the future? Are you very secure with a situation and opportunistic and looking to, to find opportunity? Or did you put some uh, popcorn in the microwave? You're going to sit back and watch the show as this thing unfolds. That's an important question, guys. Yeah. A answer it. Um, we don't see who answers what. It's all anonymous. So this isn't um, a way, like there's nobody can reach out to you. But take the poll. We're going to share the results of the poll. And if you are on the defensive, reach out to us. We can give you some pointers on what to do the best in defense. If you're on the offense, take a look at some opportunities. If you're sitting back and watching, we'll give you some more popcorn to do so and tell you exactly what to watch out for to set yourself up. For those on the offense, for those with capital to deploy, yes. this is probably the busiest time in history for private lending. Carmen? You got it. it is you're you're going to have so many people that yeah. need financing to get back into the seat that they were in, to, to take advantage of an opportunity. Yep. How does one get private money to make money off other people's money? And how does one profit from lending money? So there's two things here. Oh yeah, there's it's huge. So it, hit us with both sides. Start with anywhere you want. Well, okay, so we'll start off with this type of climate, uh, economic climate. Uh, private money is huge, as you just said. Uh, it's recession proof. So people that invest in mortgages, um, this is the time we can make some real good money. Um, unfortunately for the people that are borrowing, there is uh, more demand than supply. So we are going to be increasing interest rates for the borrowing part of it. Uh, for the lenders, it's great. So investors that are looking to put money out into mortgage investments, uh, you can use registered funds, TFSAs, all of that and cash. And what we do is we will uh, put together packages for our investors that are looking to invest and you'll have all the details of what it is. So our company, it's a make sense approach. Um, when you get into private lending, it's a make sense approach. So what we're looking at is how are they making the mortgage payments? Um, how are we exiting this, this investment? Um, is the person in, in, in distress or are they purchasing an income property? So those decisions are made and then we, we deliver them to our investors and then you can invest on it. We have a portal um, at profunds.ca where you can go on and actually see the different investment opportunities available. Um, so there's a lot. We're so overwhelmed. That's why we're busy, busy, busy. Like, yes, you know, I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, yeah, now, like, is there... Canada wide, people are coming to us looking for a first mortgage. And, you know, when people invest in mortgages, so typically on a first mortgage, we're, we're, we're offering anywhere from 7 to 10% interest. Um, and that's a first mortgage, which means a security or in first position. If anything happens, if they can't make their mortgage payments and we have to sell the property, we sell the property, you're in first and uh, we're the first people to be paid out outside of property taxes and, um, and away we go. So um, it's, a, it's a great investment. So typically it's seven to 10. I'm thinking now that uh, where we're at and the demand for the money and the uncertainty in some people's minds of what's happening out there with real estate, we're gonna be in the range of probably, I'd say nine to 11 for first mortgage. And, wow. um, but I don't want people saying, oh my God, no way am I gonna do that? But listen, I've used private money all the time. Like I just purchased a house in Burlington. I got a sweet, sweet deal. Um, and it's a single family home. I, I paid, you know, two, probably 200 grand less than what it should have been. And, wow. and wow. Yeah, I got an appraisal. So I got an appraisal at a million and 20 and I paid 755 for it. So I can lend somebody, this is a great example. I can lend people money on the appraised value. So as long as we're the ones that have ordered the appraisal and we know what that value That's right. is, um, I want to make sure our investors are safe, but um, we can lend on that. And, uh, and then, you know, it's, it's an awesome opportunity to do these things. I'm sorry. I want, I want to go back a step. Yeah. You said, as long as the appraisal is mine, as long as I know that I said my appraiser, I know the value. Yes. What, what a lot of people don't know is the amount of control you have in private lending. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit like, 
start with so for anybody that's on here that's never invested in a in a, in a private mortgage meaning that they have let's say i have a hundred thousand in my rsp or, or 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 in cash it doesn't matter but this is rsp eligible mm -hmm. so let's say i have 60 grand in my tfsa 60 grand in my rsp uh and i know that jazz tacar needs a loan for 100 grand yeah so you as a broker you're you're gonna call you're gonna call me and say hey i have a client his name is jazz he's a real estate broker He's looking for a hundred thousand bucks. Um, would you like to do this mortgage? Mm -hmm. What should I be asking? Okay, I'm gonna say sure. Who is Jazz? Tell me a little bit about Jazz. Right. Tell, and, and what is he putting up? Give me how that would work. Right. So, so the questions would go like this. First of all, where is the property located, um, and what type of property is it? And uh, we determine that. So, if it's a residential, let's say it's a condo or a home. Um, that you're looking to purchase. Um, what we would know is, want to know is what type of property it is and is it owner occupied? Is it a rental property? What are your plans with the property? Um, how, what's your income like? Are you able to make the mortgage payments? Um, and what are you, what's our exit? How are we getting out of this? And, and when? And when, yeah. So typically private money is one year. Okay, so when you're lending on an individual mortgage, it's typically a one year term. And if people have some sort of a challenge or they don't want to have to service that mortgage, we often can add the interest payments for that one year term to your mortgage so that you don't have to make payments monthly. So that'll help out a lot of people when they're doing flips or renos or anything like that, or are in a situation where they have a ton of equity right now and they just want a cushion right now because they're not, they're uncertain. So we can get some money for you. We can even do a second mortgage if you like. Um, and we're going to be a little more conservative on the loan amount that we're going to lend you versus the appraised value of your property. So we, we would go up to 85%. We're at 75, 80 right now, just to be cautious. Mm -hmm. And the appraisals that are going out are going to be based on today's current market. Is there, and, is there a minimum investment for investors? Um, yeah, like most of the time it's around 50,000, but we can do 20, 25 if we want to help people out get, get started in this business. And I wanted, I wanted to just confirm, you said that you can also invest registered funds as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm not sure if people caught that. There is ways that you can invest uh, uh, your RSPs into real estate. It's not only through a first-time home buyer's plan that everyone thinks that it's the only way to take out uh, uh, your RSP to, to, to purchase real estate. No, it's, it's yeah, you don't, it, it stays in your RSP. That's right. Stays in there. And you just have to move it. So most institutions right now are not. Um, so if you have it with RBC or if you have it with TD, you're going to have to move it to uh, a trust that lets you actually self-direct your money into mortgage investments. You make the decision on what kind of an investment you want. So I'll send to you, Jazz, here's a, a deal. Uh, this guy needs 100 grand. We've checked his credit. Here's his credit. Here's the appraisal. Here's what's in place. This is his plan. We have a little story. Um, and if you want to do the deal, you say, yeah, Carmen, I love that. Sounds great. I'm going to make 12%, 13% on my money here. I'll do this deal all day long. So then what we do is we have your money self-directed from community trust is who we use uh, because they're very easy to work with and it's not so challenging. Um, and then what happens is a lawyer works on your behalf. So you as a lender now, um are going to be signing a bunch of paperwork then it goes off to a lawyer the lawyer checks title to make sure everything's safe so that you're secure and your investment is registered on title on the property and then the mortgage payments start coming in or you'll yeah. get your interest up front uh that was my question so that 12 to 13 percent that let's use keep on using my name everyone's picking on me today so i love it um how is that paid yeah. is that paid to me at the end of the one year term if it's a one year term or is there is there a way that i can actually get uh, um, um, interest paid to me monthly so um it's up to you in, in okay most circumstances we'll say okay this person doesn't want to have to have the monthly payment but we're going to pull aside an interest reserve we're going to put that aside for the full 12 months so we are mortgage administrators so we can make the decision do you or you will make the decision do you want your payments monthly because you've got a line of credit to pay because you borrowed to lend? Or do you want your money all up front? And uh, you can make that decision. Now, if you obviously take the money up front, your real investment is a lot less per se. Right. So yep. your return goes up. 
So it's all about what you need as an individual and what you're like, if you go on a credit and you're borrowing at four percent interest as a line of credit or on a mortgage at three or two and a half, you can put out your money at 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 percent. And you make the difference on that. So now so much to talk about here. Lo love that guys. The the all the questions that you guys have, please keep them in the Q and A section so we can yes. make sure that we get to them. Um, if there is a couple of questions that we do not get to, um, again, you're going to be receiving an email around three o'clock, four o'clock today that will allow you uh, to, to 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 get introduced. Uh, to Carmen and her team. And I know Carmen, anyone that's introduced by REC, you'll put the white gloves on for us yeah. as you always do, but you, yes. you'll just make sure. Absolutely. We yeah, are I'm gonna that you are from REC because that's important for us to know. Thank you. We really, really appreciate that. Carmen is going to stick with us, okay, for a, for, for a little bit longer. Get your questions in the Q&A section. In the meantime, we're going to just bring up, uh, uh, bring on, I apologize, Charles JQ from Milbourne Real Estate to discuss um, a current opportunity. So we went out to our REC nation um, between myself and Simos in the last couple of weeks. We've been all over, all over social on live um, uh, Zooms and live Facebook feeds. And, and people are asking, hey, guys, can you look out for opportunities and please bring them to us? And so Charles JQ from Milbourne Real Estate, we've been working with him and his team for the last 10 years now. Um, seems like it's even longer. Um, and, and he's going to come on and talk a little bit about uh, a project that is in Oshawa where we have a handful of units. They have a handful of units right now um, that have a rental guarantee. It's a student housing uh, project. Welcome, my man, Charlie. There's that, there's that handsome Charlie. Stop that. How are you? Guys, here's so the funny thing. Me. Here's the thing. We're so lucky we still have Carmen on the screen. She literally brings up our 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 what is it called like our quota like in terms of our look like look at this screen thank you for let, let, let staying me, let me on make, with us Carmen without you we would be in trouble right now J Jazzy let me make one note because I yeah. saw the the nicest manicure of all time she has yeah. the fastest color nails I've ever seen <laughs> Sh show those beautiful purple beauties right there bang bang those are fast those are fast guys it's humiliating I've had to do <laughs> so guys just just for everybody watching get your q get your questions into the qa uh, q a section um, um charles uh, charles and us are going to have a little conversation for like 10 minutes then we're going to come back and get to as many questions as we possibly can we've heard your feedback guys we love hearing you and watching you but it's going on for two hours so we're trying our best to kind of keep it within an hour kind of period get your questions in q a uh, Carmen's still going to be here. And as I mentioned, for all of our friends on YouTube and the thousands watching live, we really appreciate you guys uh, getting onto our YouTube page, start flirting around and navigating some of our content there. Um, and I just got a poll question. Sorry. Every time I get a poll question, it comes up on my screen. Um, get your question. Uh, make sure if you're watching on YouTube live, just put in the comments your name and email, and we'll make sure you get part of the REC Nation. Sorry, the whole polling great. is brand new. I don't think we know what we're doing. I think most people got our silly question but didn't get it to our meat. They got the question of who's more handsome, but they never got to vote on yeah. to actually put their real stuff in. So look, we, if it didn't, we, we, guys, if it didn't work, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we'll figure it out for next week. Charles, get on the show, bro. Thank you very much. You guys are the best. Thanks for having me. Well, buddy, look, um, uh, as I mentioned just before we brought you on, um, uh, there is a lot of people still looking for opportunities. If I look back for it in the decades and decades of the real estate market as real estate goes kind of up and down, when there is a slight dip, uh, a compelling buying opportunities start to present themselves. Um, and, and as we've seen now, even during COVID um, and this and this freeze so to speak in the market um we're starting to see some compelling opportunities and you have one we're going to kind of give you the stage right now my man um the virtual stage so to speak and let you kind of speak about this project in oshawa and why why you're so excited about it and why we're very very excited to help facilitate it with with the handful of d units that we have available great yeah this is from a a, a very experienced group of developers 
who build a lot of rent for themselves. And because of that, it's very capital intensive. And so there's a, a unique opportunity now to get into an ownership structure with them where you can own these uh, apartments that they've designed uh, that are excellent investment opportunities because they're so motivated to raise capital um, on the rental side, right? So can I, uh, can I share my screen actually? Because I, I have something that I think will, will help as we go along here. Are you, able to, to or, are you able to or do I need to do it? No, I think I can do it. Let me try. With Perfect. There we go. Yes. Yes, How's you're that? doing it, buddy. Can we do that? Great. Yes, we can. Excellent. What are you I using? Uh, what are you using? A 1984 Mac? And, <laughs> and just before you get started, buddy, I'm a as, PC guy. As, as I mentioned, guys, at around three o'clock, you'll receive an email. That email will allow you to um, uh, uh, get an introduction to Pro Funds as well as get the full package on this opportunity. Again, don't try to cramp your hands. Just get the music. Get the music of the opportunity. I hope you got a lot of value. I'm sure you did from what Carmen was speaking about. But you're going to be able to receive that email. Uh, you'll be receiving that email. And then you'll have the option to either uh, uh, choose if you want to be introduced to, to Pro Funds or get more information on this opportunity or both. And, and, and just by getting uh, the information on this opportunity, you'll, click a, you'll get a link. You'll get, the, you'll get the floor plans, you'll get all the incentives. It's very, very heavily swayed and in favor of inve uh, 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 for investors. And then there'll be a reservation form where you can reserve a suite. And anybody who's done business with us in the past, you know we hold your hand throughout the whole process. Go ahead, Charles. All right, thank you very much. So let me start with a rendering. This is a project that they have under construction in Kingston, Ontario. And Kingston is known for many things. It was the original capital of uh, the country before Ottawa. It's a beautiful historic uh, town and uh, it's also home to Queen's University. So these developers actually graduated from Queen's and started building student accommodation next to the university in Queen's. And they started with homes and then got into townhomes. Uh, they're a very sophisticated group. Their team grew. Um, they are one of the leading property managers now in terms of uh, student accommodation for high-end accommodation. And this is their latest project in Kingston, Ontario, right at Center Ice, right at Princess University. For those of you, for those of you who know where that is, it's uh, one of it's essentially the best location for a student residence uh, for Queen's University. And this is the site recently. Um, under construction. It's actually further along now, but I thought I would choose this picture because it shows it's under construction. You can see part of the team there along with their partners on the left-hand side. And uh, so they've since expanded out of Kingston and they've been developing all over. So Oshawa, Barrie, uh, this is a project in Miami. This is a very large project. This is the rendering. And this is across from FIU. That's Florida International University. So, which is the fourth largest university um, in the United States. And this is, you're really seeing, what you're really seeing here is the size and scale of the building. What you're not seeing is the uh, resort style nature of, of the property. So I'm not showing you any of those other re renderings just for the sake of time, but now you can see what stage it's at now. It's essentially completed. So um, I'm just going to answer this poll here. What will your next investment be? Mine will probably be deconstruction. Um, all right, here we go. So this is back to this building here. It's 20 stories with 880 uh, units. And so that's again in Miami from the same development group. Uh, this here is in Oshawa. This is a, um, a townhouse complex that they built and sold to, they sold the entire complex to one owner. And um, this is right across from University of Oshawa Institute of Technology. So this is the property management group that I mentioned. You can look them up, they're called Varsity Properties. And they started from a hotel background. And this, this is really special um, because this, this opportunity is really special because Varsity Property is also providing owner services. So as an individual owner, they will not only manage the, the, the building on behalf of the condominium corporation, but they'll also manage the rental on behalf of you, if you like. And it's free for the first year. 
and and after that you they, they charge a percentage on the rent and that's 14 percent but it also includes cleaning services as well like i said they came from a hotel background and the beauty of the cleaning services is on a monthly basis you have people that are coming into the apartment to clean it the students love it it's a premium service but they're also keeping an eye out for any deficiencies in the apartment you know is the student doing well are is there anything we need to take note of to report back to the owners so this is a really, really special combination. And this is part of the same original group that grew out of Kingston, Ontario. So this, I wanted to start with a map here, right? So this is Simcoe Street that runs north-south and there's Conlin Road, which is the major intersection uh, that runs east-west at the top of the screen. And then you have Durham College and University of Ontario Institute of Technology. So Durham College has around 9,000 students. UOIT has around 10,000 students. And they have big plans to expand because these, this is a technology oriented university. It's been referred to as the MIT of the North. And there is a lot of students that are competing to get into this campus. So they have a master plan expansion plan uh, all the way out to 2030 for expanding the size of the campus. So the next slide here, this is an aerial image of essentially the same area and I just dropped on a few of the logos here so you can see how active Podium Developments has been in the neighborhood and also highlight the two uh, communities that we're featuring here with this opportunity. So you can still see the university there on the northwest side and the Taylorwood Towns is the first logo on the top in white and that one was sold to our community and then below that you have university studios and university towns. And as you can see, these are essentially a budding campus. This is about as close as you can get to campus and surrounded by a low rise neighborhood. Now- um, Charles, yes. I, I just have a quick question for you, man. Sure. A lot of people, when you, they hear Oshawa, they think blue collar. When they hear yes. Durham, they think blue collar. Uh -huh. When they hear Oshawa, they think GM. Um, right. That is so old. How many post-secondary institutions are in Oshawa alone now? Well, I think, well, right here we have Durham and UOIT. And, and I, think I, I think I know where you're going with that, right? Because the, the campus is it, it's such a, an institution in itself that it generates its own micro economy That's right. in the surrounding area, right? That's right. Yeah, like, like there's over 1500 faculty just for UOIT in addition, in addition to the, the 10,000 students. And there's, there's a dr drastic undersupply of housing next to major universities across the country. And this is no exception. And especially with the expansion plans that they have in place. And, and the only options that students really have are to draw far away. And so, um, and since students have been saving their whole lives or their families have in order for them to go to school, especially with these types of schools that are so competitive, you have the best students competing to get in. They're investing their lives at this stage. This is like the most important stage of their life. This is the last chance for, for mom and dad to really help them out before they leave. Um, they're willing to pay a premium, especially if it means that they get to focus on their studies more. They live closer to campus. They have their own apartment. They have their own. Um, they have their own suites with laundry and and kitchen. Uh, you know, they're coming out of first year residence. They're sharing a bachelor apartment with someone else. So now they have the opportunity to own their own bachelor apartment and not have to go down the hall for the showers, and not have to live in a seven bedroom house that you know isn't well maintained or or to drive for twenty minutes to get to school. And so. Um, this is a premium accommodation and they attract premium rents uh, and they're quite popular. Now, these two communities have recently been completed. So University Towns, which is uh, right here uh, in the middle, just, just on, on the south side in the middle there, that was just registered in March and University Studios was just registered last year. So these are brand new. They're also fully furnished as well. Jazz, I thought you were going to jump in with something there. I was going to say, no, like it, it, that's very important to mention because you have, and I apologize, I have the, the poll always coming up. Um, you, you have an opportunity to invest into a project that's already built. It's built, in fact, majority of the units that are in both complexes, um, um, in the townhome complex and, 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 and in the condo project. I, I, maybe you can tell me, Charles, is it like 90% occupied already? It's fully occupied. 
it's fully occupied. I apologize. Um, and so you as an investor, you're going into a project that is A, already built and B, it's already rented and just and, and, and REC was able to go back to the builder and say, look, I mean, the time that we're in right now, please, we need you to put your money where your mouth is and offer us a guarantee. So if any of our clients get into this project and you'd be closing on this at some time like end of August and, and as an investor, you're going to be looking at anywhere from 20 to 25% down, but that's even spread out from now until August. We want to make sure that our clients are protected from a tenant's perspective. And the builder um, and the developer came back and said, we'll give you a one-year rental guarantee to make sure that you have the comfort in knowing that, that you're not going to have any issues with, with tenants. That's right. And that's in addition to the one-year free property management by Varsity Properties. I, well. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and, and do these come fully furnished as well, like both projects, if they go on the condo and the student housing? Uh, sorry, they, the, 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 the townhome they, chart? They, they do, they do. And this is a beautiful thing, right? Because fully furnished, again, provides a hotel-style living for a student, right? They show up, all they need is a backpack, a laptop, some cutlery, their bed sheets. But there's, it actually serves multiple purposes, right? So... Uh, it provides a premium accommodation for the student, so they're now going to be paying premium rent. Uh, but also, a lot of the wear and tear on properties comes when you're moving in furniture uh, as part of the move-in. And one of the beauties of student housing is that you're not going to have a tenant there for 20 years. They're cycling in and out every two, three, four years so you can raise your rent, right? That also means that you have a little bit more turnover, maybe. So... Um, so, but if the furniture already comes included, you're not going to have people bringing home Chesterfields, you know, and, and furniture that they, they had from their, their mom's basement that weren't meant to fit into the space. So you actually have a lot less wear and tear on the property. So you get premium rent and you have a property that's uh, in better shape um, and it's more what convenient excited, for the students as well. What excited me about both projects is the pricing. There's pricing yeah. that I haven't seen for years with ones in front of them and for, for, for bachelor <laughs> units. That's and right. Yeah. Like I haven't seen a one in front of a purchase price for a very long, I've been in this business for 15 <laughs> years. Um, that's for bachelors. It, it, for, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I mean, in fact, I mean, if you look, think about it, parking spaces downtown right now are going for $110,000. Right. Um, and so if you can look at a unit, maybe in the mid ones, high ones um, for a bachelor unit, and then for three bedroom townhomes, uh, the, the, we have one townhome, I believe, Charles, in, in the town, uh, that's a three bedroom. And then is there something that like that, that is a three bedroom in the condo complex or are those all bachelors? Okay, this is a good question because there's a bit of an overlap in the product types between the two communities. So essentially okay. what, you see, what you see here on the screen right now is the campus, right? Highlighted in blue, that's UOIT. The yep. Taylorwood on the right hand side, that's something they built in the past. They sold the entire community to one owner. Okay. So what we're talking about now is University Studios. This is an older image. So now it's actually completed and built. And directly south of that would be Towns. So Studios is all studios. Okay. okay. Towns is um, stacked townhomes, three bedrooms. I'll let you get into the details on the pricing on that offline. Yeah. But the pricing's phenomenal. I'll just say that it's around four hundred thousand, okay, yeah. for a for a three bedroom townhome, and cool. yeah, very nice. And, well, and well, uh, the the other thing I liked about the townhomes with the three bedrooms that they each come with an ensuite as well. So they're rented out separately, but they they fully furnished as we mentioned. But each bedroom has its uh, has a full ensuite. That's a good point. Yeah, that and that's something that you'll see uh, from from some of the leading student housing owner operators. That's how they tend to design their properties. So the, the studios uh, community is all studios. The town's community does have a building that has studios in it. So it's a bit of a hybrid, right? So, so, but that's just a matter of like, which address are you getting essentially? Because the product is really the same. Either it's a townhouse or a studio and it's essentially the same location as you can see here. So here's the campus map along with the two communities just to the south of campus. You can see studios is literally a budding the edge of campus of UOIT and University Towns is just below it. Now, I'm, I was talking about, you know, the, the reputation of, of this group, of this development group and varsity properties, um, everything that they've accomplished. They, they have such a good relationship with Starbucks. I hear that they have one of the busiest locations in the country uh, next to the university. So they actually have a Starbucks uh, location that's already moved in. They have an Osmos 
shawarma. They have uh, Domino's as well. Uh, pizza. Stop uh, it. I'm getting hungry, Charles. Right I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting to stop it. <laughs> Uh, so, all right. So, I, I, I just have a couple of questions. Can I, can I just? Yes, jump in. How, how many units do we have available? We just, at this point, we really just have a handful. This is a really unique opportunity. These buildings were completely sold out and done. And in talking with Jazz, we were looking for something special. And there just, there happened to be the right time. For some reason, the developer had these under their hat. And like I said, they're in the rental business. And when you're building rental, it takes more equity. So Jazz, we, we, made, we made a deal. So now we can offer okay. something very so, special. So, so let me ask a question. Is, is there, because these are student rentals, there's all these crazy components uh, that, that make this, uh, in my opinion, a no brainer. The price point is right. The proximity to secondary schools is right. Is there any, um, anything we need to know about the financing? Because we have Carmen on the phone. These are closing in August. So somebody right. says, they put up their hand, I want to get one. How does financing work? How would Carmen uh, get the financing done on this property? Is it conventional mortgage? Give us some detail and some, give us some context around that. Can I jump in first, Carmen? So, so yeah. the, um, the townhomes are easy. That's something that you'll have a lot of different selection uh, with and, and Carmen can speak to that. The, the studios, not every bank likes financing studios, right? The banks are slow to move on things and uh, on new trends. And as the pricing has gone up in the city, we've started to see more and more of these smaller suites in Toronto. And the banks have, haven't really, they've been pretty slow to adapt to it. Um, and this is an entire building full of, of, and it's student housing as well, right? So if a bank thinks that it's gonna be, like when people hear student housing, they think of the issue of student housing, right? Which is what makes this such a great opportunity. The issue of student housing is the student housing accommodation is so terrible, typically speaking, because there's so much demand from the schools, you don't need to maintain it, right? So banks approach it very, very cautiously. So we do, we do have uh, a number of banks that we've worked with um, that can get this done, but you won't be able to get a studio finance in this building by just any bank, okay? So, uh, but as for the townhome, you know, there's a lot more opportunities there. And I well, definitely suggest that you take uh, REC and Carmen's advice on exactly how to go about doing that. And, 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 and just to kind of jump in as well, um, with the bachelors, we generally are going to be looking at 20, we're going to generally be looking at 25 to 30% down, probably closer to 30% because of the, the, the factors that Charles mentioned. And, and obviously we'll, we'll, we'll be speaking with Carmen to see if there's if there's maybe a lender that she knows that could do it with 20% down, but keep in mind, guys, we're talking 30% down on a, on a hundred and seventy, hundred and sixty-five thousand dollar unit. Right. Um, so that extra 10% generally doesn't really affect most people that, 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 that are kind of in the REC nation or anybody who's watching on YouTube live right now, we're talking about a difference of 17, $18,000, right. If even that. Um, and, and the nice thing is, is that you get to, you're actually going to be able to refinance a little bit sooner as well um, because you're putting down more towards your principal. So those are details that you're going to get emailed to you a little later on today. Charlie, because I'm trying to stick to a certain time and Seamless and I are trying to stick to a certain time with Brunch with RC, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of sign off before you sign off? Is there anything that you wanted to say, my man? Let me flip through this really quick just to wrap so, it up for you, right? So here's the completed building for University Studios. Here's what the towns look like here. They're nice. Okay. They're very They're nice. nice. So here, here they are completed. These are like phenomenal. We actually have families that have moved into these. Sorry, this, right? this isn't a rendering. This is complete. This is now complete. So first I show the rendering. Now I'm showing what it looks like complete, right? Because look, some developers- Look at Oshawa with such a New York look, eh? These but developers so, so, do a really, really high quality product. I told you they normally build rental, right? So when they build, they build at a very high spec. So that's good. If ever you're investing with a developer that builds their own product, there's a good sign that uh, they're going to build high quality. And in the back of this, you see the townhomes on the left and right. In the back of this image, you actually see that studio building. So that's technically part of the complex of townhomes, but you have the studios located there. I'm going to keep flipping through this. This is pretty much almost done. So then this is the townhomes with the studio building on the left, all part of the townhome community. This is what the bachelor apartment looks like, okay? And this is a doll, what we call a dollhouse image. And what you'll see is there's a bathroom on the left. You've got a full kitchen um, with a two burner stove. 
Um, they've also designed a, a table bed. So that's, that's a dining table and it actually comes down into a bed. And the desk on the far right actually will, it's a standing desk. So it, you'll actually be able to press a button, raise it up to the same height as counter height if you're looking to extend the amount of surface area that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna keep flipping through here. Here's a, a typical plan for the studios. And just, I'm just breathing through it. And Jazz, you have everything on your side I have already. everything in the, yeah. in the email that comes through to you guys at uh, around three o'clock. You'll be able to click the link, request more information. All this information will be there as well as in that Google uh, uh, folder. You'll see a reservation form. You just fill out the reservation form. Let us know if you're interested in the bachelor or if you're interested in uh, a three bedroom. Uh, I believe to be exact, Seamus, you asked the question on how many units. Um, I think we're at about four units right now. Um, it could be five, but I think it is four units in total. Um, and so if you are interested, get the reservation form in. That doesn't mean you're buying something. That means you're going to get on a call with someone from my team, um, including Charles. We'll, we'll We'll actually, I'll have him on a call as well because he knows this project very, very intimately. He'll be able to answer any questions you have. And then if it makes sense in your portfolio, we then move to the next step. If anybody's been done anything with the REC Nation in the last uh, uh, 15 years, you know that we really hold your hand throughout the process because, you know, peeling back the business curtains, uh, uh, peeling back the curtains in terms of business development, we know that if we take care of you the first time, you're more apt to introduce us to your friends and family. You're more apt to, the calls after you do the first investment with us is usually like, Jazz, just pick a unit for me. I don't really care. Like, I'm good to go. So, but that starts with, us taking the time up front. So just by putting in a reservation form, that doesn't mean that you're actually purchasing anything. You're trying, you're reserving a unit. It's, it is on a first come first search basis because we have hundreds of people online right now, obviously. Um, um, and then anybody who's listening to the recording probably won't have uh, a, an option to get in. So it does pay to come on live at Brunch with REC. Charlie, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge. I know you, I know you said that you'd be more than happy to uh, get on calls with our team as well. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, any of our clients and investors just to walk them through it. So I thank you very much for that, my man. Charles, thank you, thank you so much. You. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you off the panel to make the other, uh, the other pictures a little bit bigger for, for everyone. Uh, nice. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for providing this opportunity to the REC and to the REC Insider family. Um, Carmen, just before we take uh, we take uh, Charles off, do you have any questions for him, or you think it's pretty self-explanatory for the financing on the townhouses? Um, yeah, I think he nailed it. Right on. So, so um, I'm just going to put you back on the attendee list, Charles. Uh, thanks again for being here, pal. Thanks, Charles. Be well, everyone. Thank you so much. Be well. Just for the sake of time, maybe we'll pick out um, uh, two, three questions. I think, I think Carmen, you being you and, and, and providing so much value, I think you went into the Q&A already and started answering questions. Yeah. Um, you are the bomb. Thank you as we're trying to be very, very efficient and effective. We know it's a Saturday. We know how many people have uh, uh, already given us uh, an hour, a little bit longer than an hour of your time. But why don't we pick a couple of questions? Maybe there's a couple of questions that you might be able to notice, Simos, that never got answered. Why don't we answer a couple of questions live right now? Uh, sure thing. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we are in a step Scotiabank program. I know the program very well. I'm actually... Uh, do uh, increasing my step personally um, with the bank. And this is, um, again, the, the times are insane as far as if you had established lines of credit uh, where you don't have to go through any really steps other than a new appraisal. Uh, Scotiabank uh, has a step program, great program. Are we locked in with them for our mortgage vehicle with it? When it comes with renewal, I've been told that we are. I would like a second opinion. You're absolutely not stuck anywhere. And Carmen, this is a great question for you. Uh, we are in a step program, uh, which is the line of credit. As you pay down your mortgage, it becomes a line of credit. Uh, are we locked in with them for when our mortgage vehicle uh, comes up for renewal? When it comes up for renewal, you're not locked in. No, no, no. no. Correct? Yeah. So, and, so, and it also depends on the terms that you take. So, um, you know, a lot of people ask, do I do uh, a fix versus a variable? And at any time, even if you are locked in with a variable rate, your, your penalties are very low. So it's worth it for the most part if you have a higher rate to, to break it and go for a new one. Um, sorry, Carmen, you have to get closer to your mic. 
uh, people cannot hear and, um, okay. and that's big. Uh, what I'm also going to do, I totally forgot. I almost took Tyler's job and he gets paid very handsomely to do his job. Tyler Walburn, get on this screen and do the Q&A with Jazz and Carmen, please. And myself, where are you? Let's pick two, two more questions. And then we, as, as if your questions did not get answered, um, know that we'll go back in and answer all the questions. We'll get to you for sure. Tai Tai, air traffic control, where is you? Oh, by the way, I want to mention, I know you had this project on and our company does projects as well. That is not our project, right? So I just want no. if some of my clients are on listening that it's not related to Profines or Valor. This is separate entity. Hey, Tyler. How you doing, brother? Hi, guys. Real quick. Uh, uh, hello. I'm enjoying the sun outside while messaging nice. everyone. Uh, we have the puppies here. Awesome. Hi, puppers. Yeah. Awesome. Ty, so, why don't you pick a couple of questions, my man, and throw yes, them at us. Let's do it. All right, let's do one here from Otto. Can I use my RRSP to invest in a down payment? Can I then JV with the borrower? Um, you cannot use your RSPs as a down payment. Um, registered funds need to be arm's length, meaning not related to a company or a family member. There are programs out there, but uh, you have to go through a CMHC process and it's really time consuming and not worth the time at all. It's uh, onerous, very onerous. Just in case you had a hard time hearing Carmen, uh, really quickly, you, you, cannot use, you cannot use your RSPs for a down payment is pretty much the short answer. I pranked okay, up I, volume. That's better. Much better. <laughs> There's another question here from Hassan. Hello, Hassan. Um, what should be a strategy for someone who wants an income property but also doesn't own a home? Um, should they take advantage of the first time home buyers plan uh, after that and then invest in an income property? Or should they just start with an income property? So should they take advantage of owning a home first and then investing or go oh. straight for the income property? Um, Jess, you want to take that one? I can take that one as well. Doesn't yeah, matter. look, look, I mean, every situation is different depending on what you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, in your life, um, where you're working, so on and so forth. But I always like to think about it from the perspective, and this is my personal opinion, that you, you, you don't necessarily need to own where you live. OK, um, and so having an income property, I think, is the first goal, in my opinion. And the reason being is because you're going to get somebody else to pay the rent. You know, your personal, your principal residence is not necessarily an asset because there's, you know, you, you have to co they cost money to maintain it. And so I know a lot of people, in fact, the uber, uber wealthy, they generally don't own where they live. They rent. However, they make sure that they do have income properties. They have tons and tons of homes, but they rent them out because they want to make sure that someone else is paying it down. And then you can leverage more as well. So that's my personal opinion. Again, yeah. every situation is different. You'll get an email uh, later on today. Just reply back to it. And I apologize. Was it Hassan? It's uh, uh, Tyler? Yeah, Hassan, that was a Great question. Just reply back. Someone from our team will reach out to you. You'll speak with Simos. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll get in touch with you um, and really work down your specific question. Because again, every situation is different. Yeah. And, and to Hassan's point, just quickly, if you're, if you're just trying to get started, Hassan, the biggest part of the question would be answered is, are you living at home with your parents? Because then if you, if you can get a property rented out and you have a place to live, it's a no brainer. But if you're paying three three grand a month to be in a one bedroom downtown, and you're going to buy an income property that's going to generate you two thousand bucks a month in rent, you're really not you're not going anywhere. You're not getting there fast. So it is very individual, as Jazz was saying. But um, if if you want to schedule a time to chat due to your personal situation, we're happy to do so, pal. What's the next question? There's actually a lot of good questions here. So I don't know if we can get to all of them, but let's make sure like. We'll, we'll take a note of all these questions so we can get the answers to them. There's some really good ones here. Rapid fire them, rapid fire. Um, da, 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 okay, how will lenders, big banks versus private view my reduced income uh, because they were temporarily laid off due to COVID uh, when I apply for a mortgage? Okay, well, 
Uh, that's a very good question. And what they will do is determine whether or not the layoff is permanent or whether or not you're going back as soon as things are lifted. So in most cases, they'll take, take that as, um, like, like I said, if you are permanently laid off, that's a problem. They're not going to recognize your income. But if it's something short term, just because of the COVID, they will take into consideration that. Now, when you get into a commercial mortgage, really your personal income doesn't have any relevance. It's the, the financing, it's the ability of the property to service the debt. Yeah. So it's yep. not your personal income. So if you have problems with personal income, maybe you want to move into the commercial space. Okay. Um, okay. What I want to do, Tai Tai, only because it's 1145. Um, there's two things I wanted to do. First of all, if there's a lot of great questions, Ty, what we can do is we can do a video after where me and Jess fire off some, uh, some rapid fire and share it with a group. We can share it to everybody who was on here. Um, Carmen, I, I want to take, a, I'm going to, I want to go over the polling questions because there's important questions in there. I wanted to share those with the whole group. Sure. But before I do so, um, do you currently have a lot of great opportunities for RSP, for registered funds and for people to get into mortgages? Absolutely. So, 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 so Jazz, Jazz, can you please share where people can go for, for, for getting nope. on the list? As I, as I mentioned, there's nothing to, uh, uh, you, you're not going to be going anywhere, guys. You'll get an email in the next few hours, and Good. it's very, Good. very self-explanatory. At any time, you don't get this email, and the email will be subject, thank you, okay? It's from REC Canada, the same email that you received, um, uh, uh, the links to the webinar. It will be subject, thank you. If for some reason you don't get it by 3 o'clock, it's probably in the ether or cyberspace <coughs> or in your junk folder, you can call uh, uh, 1-833-JOIN-REC. That's 1-833-JOIN-REC. So if you don't receive that email by about three o'clock, just call that number. We'll make sure we get you in touch with Carmen, the ProFunds team, and more information on uh, what Charles was speaking about in Oshawa and anything else that you might want to ask us as well. Thanks, Jazzy. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Carmen, uh, we're, we're going to go over the polls really quick. Uh, I'm just going to start with, obviously, the silliness. Who is more handsome? Uh, I won that competition in the landslide. Well, that doesn't landslide. count because you're reading, but you're reading the answer, so doesn't I can't matter. even see if you won that or not. I don't it, even know it, about it. It doesn't that. matter. I, I won in the landslide. I'm so <laughs> handsome. I just can't believe it. Uh, <laughs> we asked everybody, what will your next investment be? And this, my friends is very interesting, 40% mm -hmm. of you. So out of the 300 people that were on today, about 100 to 150 were, were voting every time. Okay. So we have a pretty good sample size. Nice. 40%, let me just share this, share results. Here it is. 40% um, are looking for multi-res as their next investment. That okay. is insane. That goes to tell me that the REC insiders, the pro funds insiders that are on this call right now are savvy investors. They are savvy investors. That's amazing. Good to know. Stop. Uh, next question. Um, are you working? Share results. 60% um, of you are still working full time. 15% on reduced hours, some on temporary layoff, and about 15% are not working. Well, so they, just bang on with the national numbers, right? Bang so an, on with the national on. numbers. 15% yeah. unemployment, you got 14.6 on ours. Wow, interesting. Um, okay, are you working? Uh, timing for next investment. Uh, where are people at on their path? Uh, share results. 35% um, now. 30% within three months, another 20% within six months, and the last 15% uh, within a year. So we have 65% of the webcast ready to fire. You guys are out of control and insane. Wow. As always, anybody who's watching on YouTube live, if you weren't able to get onto these uh, polls because you weren't uh, uh, actually signed on to the webinar just in in the comments of youtube live like right now like like right now give us your name and your email address because we want to make sure that you get invited to our future webinars for sure 
Uh, next one is, do you feel you'll be paid in full by your tenants on May 1st? 75% said yes, 25% no. You know why I'm going to say this is going to be dead accurate? Because I believe our savvy and educated investors have contacted their tenants. They've checked in with their tenants. They are making arrangements with their tenants. And 75% know that they're going to get paid. And 25% probably know that they're not going to get paid and have to make arrangements. I think the so numbers this is came a, in. This, this is positive. Numbers came in for April 1st. I think it was 85% of people did uh, uh, get their rents You're right. in Ontario. You're right. Yeah. So we're right on, um, we're right on cue. Interesting. Uh, mortgage deferral. This is going to be interesting for you, Carm. Mm -hmm. um, and wow, <laughs> again, this speaks to, our, to, our, to the REC and uh, Pro Fund Nation. Uh, have you deferred or made arrangements with your lenders Love to defer it. payments and loans? Yes, 12%. No, 88%. Which tells me, again, that an educated consumer makes the right decision. People didn't take this as a reason to take a break or holiday from their, from their mortgage, knowing that it's going to cost them more in the long term. What's your comment to that, Carmen? Well, it's just not, it, it's not only costing them, but it does have an effect. Even though they say it's not going to affect your credit, it's, it's just the whole concept of character. And I think that if people are looking to, you know, get uh, their mortgage deferred and the bank says, oh, we'll do it. But there is some sort of a feeling there that I think you're just damaging yourself asking for it. If you can make your payments, pay it and um, less, less than the amount of questions that are going to the bank so that they can do their job and put out money. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Is there any more poll questions, Seamus? There is. There's the one, the, the big one. Okay. How, how do you feel the current market conditions as a result of the COVID-19 shutdown? So let me share this. So you were asked, how do you feel? Yeah, are you on the defensive? Are you on the offensive? Or are you getting your popcorn and chilling to watch? And this is interesting. Only 6% of this 300 plus people Six, because this is the sample size, is, I think it's dead on 100 then. Yes, it is. So out of 100 people, only six are on defensive. Yeah. So we have a tremendously positive mm -hmm. and, and, and optimistic, optimistic outlook. Yeah. 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 So on the offensive is 54% of the room, guys. They're oh, pouncing on opportunities. I think it speaks to speaks to our REC nation, the Pro Funds nation, uh, Pro Funds insiders, friends and family of ours. You are who you who you who you uh, uh, spend a lot of time with. I can tell you the first time that uh, Trudeau mentioned that we're, we should be going on lockdown. Um, I mean, I went totally totally all in on everything because I knew that's when the opportunities were going to start presenting themselves and not just from an investment perspective, high level business was okay, this is where this is where the leaders are going to come out from at this time period and we're seeing it within our own our own families in our nation right now, you know, as uh, Carmen mentioned earlier, she just hunkered down, this was the time to hunker down and 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 do more and and it that that poll speaks to that. I, I think so too. Carmen, what, how do you feel about seeing uh, almost 90% of the room either active or, or waiting to hear more? How do you, how, how do you feel about that? Um, I've been seeing it daily here. Um, and I've, I haven't seen people, too many people, not move forward with things. Like, oh, I've heard a few clients saying, oh, I'm worried because you're not going to be able to raise capital on some of our development projects. And no, that's not true. Things are happening. We're rocking on this side. So I think for the majority, people are, you know, just moving forward and not creating fear in this whole thing. So I think it's great. We need to do that. Awesome. Yeah. Carmen, what do you want to leave the, 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 the viewers and the listeners today with? It could come from any angle, mm -hmm. a mindset angle, a, a tip on investing, um, yeah. whatever knowledge you feel like dropping to everyone who's watching and listening today? I think positivity is critical. Keep positive energy going. That's my theory. That's my way of working. And um, don't cripple yourself in fear. You're missing out on opportunities. That's what See I most my man, what's, what's that one tip? What's that one thought you're having that you want to leave everyone with today? Uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm starting to struggle a bit. 
so I'm going to I'm going to pray for uh, myself uh, and all our, all our audience to keep uh, to keep a, a positive outlook on everything to tough out the course. We can't quit and make mistakes now when we're talking about the invisible enemy, which is something like a virus. We have to trust the, the resources that we have available to us. Let's get through the last few weeks of this crap uh, and let's get back to work proper. So keep a positive mindset. Keep tuning in. Like, I mean, every time I feel uh, down, I speak to, 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 my, to my family. And that doesn't mean my, my, only my wife and kids. I speak to my business partner. I speak to our strategic partners. Um, I see what they're doing, how they're staying positive. Um, we're beating up the gym a little bit, getting that blood flowing. Uh, so my, my advice and what I want to leave people with today is 100% keep your head in check, uh, get your money right, uh, meaning get prepared. There's tons of opportunity in all these angles. Uh, and let's just move forward and get back to our lives. Simos, Carmen, thank you so much for your guys' time today. I'll, 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 Simos, you signed everyone off last time. I'll do the honors today to sign everyone off. I'll leave everyone with just a huge huge from the bottom of my heart the bottom of our team's heart thank you for the last three saturdays you've graced us with your with your presence and we've now just topped the thousand uh, uh attendee mark in live attendees just on our webinars that's huge for two guys who 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 started a community not too long ago a decade ago and now we have people wanting to tune in and give us their time live at 10 30 every saturday Thank you so much to, for sticking with us this whole time. It's either, you know, you've done business with us or you introdu introduce us to your family and friends. And that takes a lot because you're putting your name on the line. And you know that we at REC do not take that for granted ever. I can speak for Carmen because we do a lot of business together. She does not take that for granted. So if you reach out and introduce her, uh, introduce a family or a friend or someone that you met on the subway, maybe not recently because you're social distancing, but if you do <laughs> and when you do, it truly, truly, truly means a lot. So thank you. Thank you for your time. And we'll see you next Saturday at 1030. Thank you. Bye, Carmen. Bye, Jazz. I'm going to end this now, guys. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. You too. Thanks.